What's going on everybody? This is Bronco Juggalo. And this is a really special story. This is the story of a group of friends who went into the woods to film a horror movie. And that horror movie was called Within the Woods. Now we're not reviewing that film today, but that film is the basis for this entire review. The film that we are reviewing is, of course, the 1981 classic Evil Dead. Now, this starts out my Evil Dead franchise reviews. I decided it was time for another franchise review, and I wanted to do Evil Dead next. Uh, I want to also dedicate this review to my very good friend, Joe the Horror Man. This is his favorite horror movie and his favorite franchise. So, Joe, these videos are for you, brother, and I hope I do a good job here. You bastards! Why are you torturing me like this? Why? Now, the reason we're talking about Within the Woods is Within the Woods was a short film that Sam Raimi, Bruce Campbell, and a few of their friends went out to film. Now, they filmed this short film to hopefully spark the imagination and the interest of investors so they could create what would become the Evil Dead. Now, the you can kind of think of Within the Woods as a prototype Evil Dead. As I said, this movie did come out in 1981. It was directed by Sam Raimi. Stars Bruce Campbell as probably one of the best known horror characters of all time, Ash Williams. And it stars Betsy Baker as Linda. Uh, this movie launched the careers of not only Sam Raimi, but also Bruce Campbell. The story is that a group of college kids go to a cabin in the woods for a little weekend getaway. While they're there, they find a book. A very strange book, the Book of the Dead, bound in human flesh and inked in blood. They accidentally unleash a curse upon the cabin and the woods themselves, a curse of unspeakable evil. Now, how's that for dramatic? Some little known facts about this is both of Sam Raimi's brothers are in this movie. Uh, Sam Raimi likes to use what are called shimps. Now shimps are stand-ins for actors. Whenever a main actor or somebody is doing something and they're too busy to come and do some of the small work that needs done, like say they just need to film a hand reaching for a door, or maybe picking up an axe, they use what are called shimps, which are just stand-in people that pick up and do those things. Or if they need a shot from the back where you don't actually have to see the person, they'll throw a wig on somebody, stand them in, and put the same clothes on them and it'll look like the actors in the scene. Now, back when this film was released in 81, it actually received an X rating. And it was put on the Video Nasties list and banned in a lot of countries. And in fact, it's still banned in quite a few. Uh, this movie was made for $350,000. And it initially started with $90,000 of investment funds. The Evil Dead is an absolute classic. So, it's kind of weird for me to talk about this movie in terms of pros and cons. Because I really don't have anything negative to say about this movie. There is a couple nitpicky little things I could point out in the filmmaking. But you have to remember, these guys were all brand new at this. They didn't know what the hell they were doing. They were making it up as they went along. And I think for what they had and what they did, they did an awesome job. Uh, there's a couple nitpicky things, like I said. Uh, there's a scene where Ash is about to bury Linda's body. He thinks she's dead. She is not. She's actually possessed by... A spirit, a demon spirit that we'll get into later what they become known as, which everybody out there knows, of course. But we'll get into all that later as we go through the franchise. But there's a scene where he picks her up to put her in the grave. And you can see the actress raise up and help him out, if you know what I mean. You can see her raise up and he puts his arms underneath her and she kind of helps him lift her up. And so you can see those kind of things. Um, there are some shaky cam spots where there probably isn't supposed to be shaky cam spots. Now, there is shaky cam in a few areas, but it was done on purpose, I believe. Uh, but sometimes there are shots done that weren't supposed to be that way. Uh, but that's okay. Most of the camera work in this film is absolutely amazing. And that's something I want to get into. There is some computer graphic effects at the end of the film to show, like, the melting of the creatures after they are killed off. And that's not great. It kind of looks like claymation almost. 
for the time that it was in, it was good, and I actually kind of like it. Uh, it's It really brings back those 80s memories for me, and I have a lot of fun with it. It reminds me of those claymation, spongy-looking cartoons that we used to watch back in the day, where they would form and unform, kind of like Gumby or whatever. That kind of shit. So, of course, this is a film that has spawned two sequels, a remake slash reboot slash sequel, and a huge hit television series from the Stars Channel. It has launched the career of one of Hollywood's biggest B-movie icons, and it also launched the career of one of their best directors, who went on to direct things like Spider-Man, Drag Me to Hell, and a slew of other great films. Now, some of the pros that I definitely want to talk about, just specific things I want to talk about, and a lot of it, honestly, is going to be on the technical side, because there is some really technical stuff in this movie, that I think is absolutely amazing, especially when you consider the fact that these guys never really did this before. Most of them were all brand new at this. And even the ones that did have some experience, it was all in a very, very modest, you know, situation. It was from a very modest upbringing, so to speak. As I said, there are times where there's shaky cam in this, but I love the camera work in this movie. I love the angles that Sam Raimi picks. It showed why Sam Raimi, this showed how Sam Raimi would become with his visuals. He is such a great visual director. He knows just where to go with that camera at all times. There's this great shot where the camera comes from behind Ash, goes over his head, is pointing down, and then comes around to go right into his face. I love it. The point of view shots are beautiful. The shots in the woods where you know that there is an evil force in the woods and it's going through the woods and it's a POV and it's really cool. There's POVs from Ash's point of view. There is so much great camera work in this film. I love that so much. The next thing I want to talk about is the gore and makeup effects. Absolutely awesome. So amazing. A lot of people don't know that uh, one of the actresses actually had her eyelashes ripped out of her head because the mask that they put on her got stuck. And when they pulled it off, it ripped her eyelashes out. And you can actually see where eyelashes were painted back on her. And I thought that was pretty funny. I also uh, read that Sam Raimi likes to abuse his actors. And I don't mean abuse in a bad way. He actually will put his actors into physical pain to get genuine reactions out of them. And there were times where some of these guys were hurting. And uh, I don't know if that's made him infamous or famous. Obviously it's made him famous because he's gone on to great heights and nobody seems to hold it against him. Because a lot of these guys return for sequels and other movies he's done. Especially Bruce Campbell, who has been in just about all of his films in one way or another. Uh, the gore effects, in my opinion, for 1981 are second to none. They look amazing. All the gore looks good. It's very bloody. They use a lot of Cairo syrup for blood. Cairo syrup, Cairo syrup, whatever it's called. Dyed it red. It looks amazing. So much blood. Uh, great beheadings. Uh, a lot of dismemberments. Uh, some really cool gouging. All Just all kinds of good stuff. Really, really like the gore in this movie. I really enjoy the special effects of this film that are not gore effects or not makeup effects. Like the, the scene where Cheryl is floating in the air and talking. I like that a lot. I like some of the effects they did once again with camera work and the angles that they shot like behind the clock. I like the special effects that were used with the trees. Like during the tree rape scene. Now a lot of people talk down on that scene. But it's really a ludicrous scene, but it's so good. They make they do it so well. And I like the way that they make everything move, how the trees feel alive. And they're inching their way across her body. And they're wrapping around and they're, you know, I think they did such a great job on all of that. And personally, I really don't mind that scene so much. Yeah, it's pretty brutal subject matter, but come on, it's a very ridiculous scene. We're talking about trees here. People get too caught up on some of that stuff. Some things times I I think people forget that movies are not real. And people get too into them. Oh, that's so terrible. I can't watch it. It's fake. Get over it. I truly love the story in this movie. And it really did establish a horror trope of the kids going into the woods, in my opinion. Now, I'm not saying this was the first Kids in the Wood movie. But it really put it down the right way, if you know what I mean. 
I love the ending in this film, and it really brings it back to the camera work again. It brings it back to this, you know, final scare, one more scare before the end of the film kind of deal. And the thing is, is that Ash feels he's finally safe. The sun has come up, all the madness is over, and he walks out into the brightness, into the light, as if he was saved, as if his salvation was near. And then all of a sudden he turns around and busting out through the house. Here comes that evil force again. And you just see him scream. And I love that. I love that shot. It is amazing. It looks great. And then I love when it cuts to black and it goes to the credits. The music that is playing right there is so contradictory to the film. That it just makes you chuckle almost. And I just absolutely love that. I think it's great. In my opinion, The Evil Dead is a masterpiece. Uh, there's not a lot of films that can boast that in the horror industry. There's a, a handful, honestly. Now, yes, there's a lot of people... The, the term masterpiece gets thrown around a lot. But in all honesty, masterpiece? There isn't very many. The Evil Dead's one of them. Another one is Psycho. And, of course, the greatest horror movie of all time, Halloween. I've even been known to use the word masterpiece. A little too liberal sometimes myself. This is the first in the Evil Dead franchise. I can't wait to do the next one. That will be coming to you soon. I hope you enjoyed this review. And uh, Joe, I hope I made you proud with it. As I said, I know this is your favorite movie. And I really wanted to come through for you with a really good review. Anyways, this is Bronco Juggalo saying, I will see you next time with Evil Dead 2. As well as whatever I come to you in between. Peace. You double